Hey everybody, it's Joel Howe, and this is part two of our 3D text tutorial. Uh, let's see, today, uh, or in the next uh, uh, 10 minutes or so, I'm hoping to, um, we had previously done the uh, storyboard sketch here. Uh, we're going to show a logo, basically kind of move up in the screen and appear out of nowhere. So what we're going to do is we're going to use 3ds Max to create uh, a text-based logo, and uh, slice that 3D text and um, we'll do a few tricks with in terms of uh, wire parameters uh, so that it, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, convenient uh, technique to use for for slicing text and uh, that, that, that text 3D text model with the uh, with the slice modifier should give us the effect we're looking for uh, and then next time we'll bring that into After Effects for the final look so I'm going to close out Photoshop because we don't need that anymore. And I've got a new, uh, uh, a new, a new empty scene in 3ds Max. And I'm just going to work in the uh, perspective view here. And we'll start by going to uh, the create, uh, create uh, shapes, and we'll use the text element here. I'm going to write. We'll just use the word logo because we're not going to tie this to anybody. Uh, typically, we're, I'm sure you'd have a font that you'd need to specify here, but um, uh, typically you would choose a font that's uh, the, uh, pretty thick in terms of uh, the strokes on the letters. Arial Black seems to work pretty well. Uh, uh, there's, there's many, many more, but we'll use Arial Black for now. So uh, typically when creating 3D text, one of the things that happens is, of course, most people look to just hit the extrude, uh, go to modify, and we'll go to extrude and we'll extrude the text and look we're done and while I agree that's that's uh, 3d text and we're all set um, I like to use the bevel modifier so I'm going to delete that extrude modifier so we're back to a, a 2d shape here and I like to use the bevel modifier and I'll just show um, let's set a height of one and an outline of one and we'll start with a negative outline of minus one so let's see if we can show that so you can see a bevel on, on the bottom for level one let me add the other two levels here let's see something like that maybe 15 units tall and another height here one and we want to bevel this again so minus one so now that looks right. So we we start with a negative outline, which actually reduces the um, which reduces the, the the shape area by one unit everywhere, uh, and then uh, and then we have level two uh, level one grows it by the by the uh, height and the width the same. So we have a four, basically a forty five degree chamfer on on the entire logo, and uh, um, we can still control the height here, and we've got a nice nice. Um, we want to make it a little thicker text we can and uh, we've got a nice bevel front and back why is that why is that bevel important uh, I like to I'm gonna rotate this and just turn on my angle snaps and just rotate this up 90 degrees I like to uh, have the, the the bevel on there because I think the edges here make the text easier to read especially if you've got some nice lighting you'll pick up more highlights that way and I just think that the low, the text just looks a little bit sharper <clears throat> okay, so uh, use bevel, not extrude, and even if it's a really tiny beveled edge, you'll still, I think you'll still get better results using bevel. And you can play with options in here like curved sides and things like that. So there's definitely uh, uh, some, some, some functionality there. So we've got our, I'm going to call this the text logo. <clears throat> so what we want to do now is we're going to animate this starting below the uh, the origin zero zero zero, and we'll have it animate up and appear. And so what I need to do though is I'm going to use the slice modifier to to basically slice this. So slice, and you'll see you can't really see the whole thing, but there's the slice. Expand out the slice modifier. Choose the slice plane sub object, and I've still got my angle snap toggle turned on, so I can rotate this down 90 degrees and choose remove top or in this case I want to remove the bottom and so now I can use the move key 
hotkey is W and uh, I can move that up and down and slice my logo text. So ideally my plan is to, if I, if I start the logo here and I move this up or, and I move the overall logo text object up then, and I move the slice modifier down at the same amount, it's going to appear as if it's arising out of nowhere. And so that's, uh, that's, that's the plan. Now, um, if I'm going to animate this, uh, I want to choose, um, you can see my default in outs here. I, I don't want to have to constrain myself to a linear animation. I want it to e. I want it. I want it to ease in and out of positioning. So that means that I. I can't. It's going to be really hard for me to use just straight keyframe animation, to uh, to do this. So, um, my plan is this. I'm going to. I want to use a, a little trick to do this. It's this is this is easy to do with scripting, but uh, there's a really handy helper tool I wanted to show, and um, and I think I can use that and wire parameters to uh, to get to get good results here. So. Um, if I start with, so we've got our, I'm just going to uh, set the slice plane back to the uh, 0, 0, 0 on the, um, on the overall piece here <clears throat> and go back and actually move the logo centered as well. So the, the object is positioned at the origin and um, under create helpers. There's a nice, nice little helper tool here called Expose Transform, Expose TM, and so just create a Expose Transform object, and you'll see it there. And uh, if we go to Modify, I can say, okay, which which node do I want to expose? And so I want to expose the text logo object. And so actually down here, you're you're going to see Expose Values for the text object logo. So if I start to move this around and I select the logo here, you'll see I increased uh, the, the as I move this, it moved up to 31.46. If I move this down, it's 13.668. So this object really just says what's the what's the transform of this other object and exposes it here, which is great because we can use these as part of our Y parameters element. So uh, so now it doesn't matter where this is located in the screen in the scene, but uh, I should be able to uh, use wire parameters to connect my overall position of this uh, overall position of this uh, text object and the slice plane and I'm going to use uh, a little math to do that. So if you're familiar with wire parameters, I'm going to bring up the uh, uh, just the whole the the whole dialogue. So we won't. So we'll see the we'll see the dialogue here. Um, we have the room to do it, and um, so you can see we don't have much in the scene. Here's our text logo object. Here's the modifiers for our text logo object. There's our slice modifier, and here's the slice plane sub object, and there's the position x y z for the slice plane sub sub object. Now, when we brought this in, I'm pretty. Uh, we rotated the slice plane sub object, so we're going to have to uh, ca uh, counter that. So now we've got the text over here, uh, exposed transform, and um, here's all the uh, here's all those values that we had for um, our text logo here, and so there's the world position Z, um, and so that's this this vertical position. So if I were to I want to basically wire the <clears throat> the, um, the the overall position of this text in Z, and and uh, you might think it's the Z position of the slice plane, but if you remember, I rotated the slice plane, so uh, I'm going to have to choose the Y position here, and um, so I basically am going to just click. I'm going to use the Z position of the overall object to control the Y position of the the um, the float here, and I'll set that a one-way connection, so it's driven by the um, by the overall overall transform here, and hit connect. And if you saw the um, the slice plane just moved, and so now we've got a situation where um, 
I can move this up and down and you can see that the local positioning of the slice plane is being driven by the same number as the overall position of the um, of the logo itself. So we've used wire parameters to actually use the to actually drive the position of the slice plane with the overall position of the text logo. And again, we're we're playing this a little different because we're we're locating the slice plane based on the local coordinate system of the object and but we're using that same value. So now as long as so what I'm going to do as a trick is instead of um Instead of having a direct relationship here between uh, between the world position Z of the overall text object and the Y position here, I'm going to uh, type a minus value in here, basically multiply by negative one, and hit update. And so now every now every time for for any positioning that we do, uh, now you get the desired effect here. It's it's going to be like the logo appears out of nowhere, um, and uh, it's based on the fact that because we're at zero zero, um, anytime we move the overall text level up, uh, it's going to move the slice plane down the same amount of uh, distance. So it's a it's a nice little trick. It keeps us from having to do any 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 scripting, and uh, and uh, as long as we, um, as long as we, uh, well, as long as the overall. Um, the slice plane is always going to be located there. So, so that's the um, that's that's the trick. Basically, wire parameters. We set it up with a negative relationship, and uh, and so now the slice plane is positioned based on the the negative value uh, uh, of the overall Z position of the logo, and that gives us our basically our text logo growing from nothing. So, in this case now, the uh, the only thing left to do is we've got some. We've got some obvious uh, issues here, so I like to put a, uh, a cap holes modifier on there, so that uh, once we've sliced it, we can um, we'll close that up so that our lighting will will work pretty well, and so we get a nice growth, and we can go from there. So this is where we're at. I think we're done with the 3D portion of this uh, in terms of. In terms of uh, this overall logo project, I think I think we can do everything else in After Effects. So I'm going to rent, uh, put a nice material on this and render out uh, 100 frames of animation. Uh, we can set that animation up right now. Basically, just uh, drag this down and turn on Auto Key and go to frame 100, and then just drag this up to the point where it stops slicing. And there's our animation, and we get some nice easing by default. Um, we didn't have to stick with a linear solution there and we're all set so I'll render this out and then we'll bring this into After Effects and take a look at finishing the look there thanks